Hi guys, so today I'm working on watercolor again, and what can I say? I love watercolor. Um, when I was going to school and I had school assignments, um, I did all of them in digital because that was the thing that I wanted to focus on and that's what I want to do professionally. So I didn't always have all that much time to work on watercolor, but now that I have time and I want to spend time on it, it's just, it's really exciting and fun to be able to get back into doing a little bit more of my traditional roots for creating artwork. But yeah, for this one, um, it may look a little bit familiar if you watched yesterday's daily draw and that's because it was inspired by one of the sketches. So the second little character that I was drawing in that video where she has this green hair and glasses, I was really liking how she was looking and it was this cool kind of personality that I was enjoying drawing and I wanted to turn it into something bigger. So actually while that, like in the middle of when I was doing that daily draw, I, <laughs> I pulled out my watercolor paper and I sketched her out right on the watercolor paper, which is kind of terrifying. I've never really done that before. And the reason is that watercolor paper can be a little bit delicate. So if you draw too hard, it, will stain the paper and it just it roughs it up. So when you erase it, it, it um, affects the finish of the paper. So I pretty much always, always um, transfer it like using a light box is usually my favorite method. So when I decided to go ahead and just go for it, it was really, I don't know, it was just kind of exciting to just jump into it and start creating artwork. And I think that the reason, I think that I've tried this before and it's never really worked. I think the reason it kind of worked this time was that I already had a basic sketch of how I wanted her to look done, but it was also much smaller, which meant that I wasn't trying to get the same exact proportions where sometimes I think that I've tried to look at a sketch and then draw it um, onto the watercolor paper and it doesn't work because oftentimes the sketch is already the right size. So when I'm drawing, I'm analyzing too much whether that line is the exact right compared to the sketch. Whereas this, I was able to just focus on the overall look of her and more of the gesture and the um, emotion behind it. And I was still able to look at her and see how I wanted the proportions, but it wasn't like I had to get it exactly correct according to that one. So I think that's kind of why it, it worked out to be able to get this sketch done pretty easily without having to erase much and that was really pretty exciting for me because I, I like that idea of being able to just get in there and start working on the piece. And then I inked it, which I love inking, I talk about all the time, but the pen that I pretty much always use now for when I do watercolor is the Pentel pocket brush pen. And that one, it actually kind of took me a little while to get used to using that pen. So at first, when I first pulled it out and started using it on watercolor paper, I was really disappointed because watching other people use it, it looked so smooth and clean. And I, since I hadn't used it yet, I didn't know how it really reacted, but with the watercolor paper, it would skip over if I went too fast. But now that I've really got the hang of it and I've used it a lot more, I really love this pen. It just adds a little bit more of this organic look to my pieces than I normally would. And it's just, it's just so much more relaxing than trying to get in there and use like the rigid stiff, uh, felt tip pens, kind of like the Microns. It's just, it's way more of a satisfying situation to be able to use this kind of pen, a brush pen. And also this ink is super waterproof. I usually like to leave it to dry for usually about 30 minutes, but for this one, I let it dry overnight. So it was just really, really waterproof. And when I started painting her, I I really wanted to work on um, one of the things that I have a big issue with when it comes to watercolor. And what I tend to do with watercolor is that I will jump right in with a much too dark color. So I'll go in with kind of the mid-tone color that that shape should be. And then it ends up too dark for the highlights. And a lot of times I'll end up doing all the different shapes, the same value of color. So then it's all flat and there's not any contrast. And that's my biggest issue with watercolors that when I work digitally, I am very used to putting things down and then playing with it and editing it and uh, rethinking what I put down. Whereas watercolor, I kind of have to think much more um, ahead. I need to look at what I want to do, not what I have done. So I tried really hard on this one to make sure that I put down a color that was significantly lighter than what I thought it would end up being and that way I could build up the colors I could build up the shadows but still leave space for there to be a highlight 
And I think that I was definitely a lot more successful on this one trying that than I have been in the past. So it just, it really helps for me to be able to force myself to think that way instead of just kind of going the way that I normally think. And I'm learning that one of the things that I love the most about watercolor is the layering effect. I mean, that's something that's very unique to watercolor as opposed to many other medias, especially painting and I really, really like that. I love that effect of it. And I really wanted to use that in this piece because a lot of times I, I don't. Like I said, I tend to go too dark too fast. And when that happens, I can't really layer a lot of stuff as much because if I do, it becomes even darker. So in this one, I was able to do that a lot more. Um, and one of the areas that I really love layering is in the highlights. I think that's one of my favorite things to do in watercolor. And what I usually like to do is put the base color down and I leave it blank where I want the highlight to be and then after that's dried I will come back and I'll add the highlight color that I want so like for her hair I did the bulk of her hair this nice coolish green color and then I went back in after it was dry with a very yellow green and I painted right over it and it really helps the highlight to blend in with the hair but still have that sheen of a different color and I think that it just really makes it pop a lot more and I I love that. I love the like magic of layering different colors together and getting this amazing and different effect. And that is pretty much it for this piece and this video. But I do actually have the original of this piece up at my shop. So this is how she turned out and I'm really excited. I love I love actually producing original pieces. There's just something amazing about having the actual physical artwork. But anyways, it is on my shop. There is a button right below me that will take you to my shop so you can take a look at her. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you at my next one. Bye!